oh my god, what are we doing at the gas station again? So, I, I, I figured, okay, we're all the way up here, we're ready to start chapter 5. So here I can do- here I can let FOMO take over. Uh, see, it's a fool's errand to try to experience 100% of the content in this game. Because there's so many conversation branches, and so many little moments where something might come up, and so on and so forth. Uh, and like, it's just this is a lot. <laughs> so normally I wouldn't really re I wouldn't normally replay a chapter because there's still a decent chance that a lot of it is going to be me repeating the same content and. Uh, it's just like little details of flavor text, like, oh, I got this particular branch this time, and so on. But chapter four was weird, in a really specific way, where we were going down a river and we constantly had a binary choice. And in that choice, you either got scene A or scene B. You play one scene or the other scene, and you completely miss out on the other scene entirely. And that, and that was pretty much the entire chapter, because I, I skipped through to this first choice at the gas station. Uh, so we can actually go back and pretty cleanly have a majority, like, new experience playthrough of the chapter, where it's pretty much all new content. Uh, and so, like, uh, this, 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 this chapter seems uniquely replayable in a way that there isn't as much like diminishing return for putting in that extra time to come back to it so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it in this case if you're watching these videos live and you don't want to re-experience this chapter and it, the different scenes that are gonna I don't, I, mean, I don't know why but if for some reason you want to skip this part uh, if for no other reason than continuity like you don't want to do a, a parallel timeline where different choices were made because it might affect parts of chapter 5 or whatever. Uh, you can just go ahead and stop watching now and you can come back when the thumbnail says Act 5 and then you can start watching again. And then you can come back and watch the replay of Act 4 again later if you want to, if that's the reason. Or And same thing, like if you're watching this in the future and these videos are already out, you can just skip to whichever video ha says Act 5. Uh, but I'm going to indulge a bit. On one hand, I'm kind of like, wow, this is going to make this playthrough even longer. And it is a kind of decently long playthrough, in part because I'm doing all five chapters in one go. Instead of instead of slowly over the course of seven years like many people did. But you know what? This game's interesting enough to warrant the time. I don't really regret the uh, how long this playthrough kind of is by indie game standards. Because uh, Kentucky Route Zero is one of those weird memorable striking ones and it's it's just neat to talk about so last time Ezra went and followed Ju Johnny and Junebug to the gas station which actually was the beginnings of them having conversations about adopting Ezra basically now he's gonna look around at the map room Ezra stayed on the boat looking around the map room And as far as context goes, what's going on here is I loaded... Oh, you can't do it here. Uh, but uh, I we've been playing in the center save slot, and so I went over to the right save slot and then started chapter 4. So this might be a, a timeline that reflects, like, some kind of default version of options, because it's not... this is not connected to my original save. But I actually don't know how much continuity there is from chapter to chapter. I don't really know how much your choices affect future chapters in this game. Or if they're mostly just vignettes to experience. I'm not really sure. Ezra watches the lake drift by. He sees... A boat covered with silver frogs. A floating gas station. Five small boats tethered together with silver rope. A small island covered with barnacles. What a relief. Thanks for taking the wheel. Our secret, okay? How do you know which way to turn? I just keep my eyes open. That's the most important part. Speaking of which, so was he he was watching the cat the bridge while she used the restroom, I think. 
Oh, hey, there's the gas station. I was hoping we'd cross paths soon. It just kind of drifts around. You never know where you'll meet it. As you can see by this dial right here, our fuel situation is pretty desperate. I had a bad habit of letting that needle spend a lot of time in the red zone. I used to have a, uh, a 1982 red firebird. Uh, just kind of ended up with it somehow. There's a whole strange story about how like the original owner got it when it was relatively new and then died and it sat in a garage for decades basically so it was actually like relatively pristine for what it is. But I, I started driving it to high school <clears throat> and then eventually drove it to college like an hour away each way plus traffic would mean that it would be driving like three or four hours a day in some days pretty much every day. And it really wasn't a commute car, it really just burned through uh, gas like crazy. But it was the car that I had available to me in the way that you often get when you're growing up. You just kind of have cars. And this was a particularly strange one where it was like weirdly fancy but also, also like especially not particularly suited for the task I actually wanted it for. And as somebody who doesn't particularly care about cars, it was kind of neat having a car that stood out in the parking lot and you could find easily and it was also just kind of like visually it was kind of neat to look at a weird different car from a different era that actually looked decent instead of just looking old uh but i wasn't it wasn't especially like a huge uh it wasn't especially like a huge thing of pride for me or anything uh, i was perfectly happy to move on to a better more gas efficient car for my for my needs but uh something i'll always remember that and i, I it's weird thinking back to this because i'm like why jesus christ why would you risk this the gas would always stop at three-fourths full. And so I came to the conclusion it must be misaligned. So like three-fourths full must mean that it is completely full. Uh, which means that like when it reaches zero, it must be like one-fourth full still, right? And then it would just sit at zero for like one-fourth of a tank amount of gas, which was like an unmeasurable amount, but like, you're probably fine, right? You're probably fine. And so like, I would just ignore the fact that the tank was, that the readout said empty, and I would just keep driving on various like trips. Some of it might've been just desperation tied to like, I gotta get there on time. I gotta get to my classes or whatever. But like, there was always this desperation of like, I'm still driving even though my, my, my car is telling me my tank is empty and I'd go for a while. Uh, I don't think I ever paid any consequences for that recklessness. I think it always worked out. But, uh, boy. It kind of gives me anxiety thinking back to it. <laughs> Even now. It's weird to think about. What I think about when, I, when they're talking about the needle here. We should only be docked at the gas station for a few minutes refueling. You might just, you might just want to stay aboard. So, you like boats? Yeah, my dad had a boat for a while. Oh, what kind of boat? It had a joystick to drive it. We put it in the pond near our old house. Ah, I see. So this one's a little bit bigger. <laughs> Same idea, though. So, what else did I neglect to explain earlier? Uh, this area is called the Wheelhouse. All these gauges and controls help me understand what's going on with the mucky mammoth and her hall. This is a compass, but it doesn't work very well down here. For some reason. I just go by landmarks, basically. And lights. Did you see those two lights? On the sides of the boat? A red one and a green one? All of the other boats have them, too. Some are different colors. Or in different configurations. If we cross, pa cross paths with someone uh, right away, I can work out what kind of boat they're in and what direction they're going, even in the dark. It's all about looking up here. The other half is piloting this boat. The other half of piloting this boat happens down in the map room. Speaking of which, Kate peers out the window. Have we passed the big rock that looks like a dinosaur yet?
No, but we passed a little island with a bunch of ducks on it. Oh yeah, Duck Island. It's named after a nasty old hermit called Edgar Duck. <laughs> As opposed to the ducks. Who put a claim on it many years ago and tried to build a house there. I heard he didn't have a bed or a kitchen. But he used all his martial material on a big fence. He used to blast an arrow horn if anyone drifted too close. He eventually died, but the name stuck. And at some point the ducks moved in. Maybe people dropped them off there. I don't know. That's weird. We should have definitely passed Dinosaur Rock by now. Kate looks out the window. Oh, wait, there it is. Up ahead, see? Wow, that's my new favorite rock. It's great, right? What was your old favorite rock? My ro a rock my aunt got in the mail from Arizona. It was bright green and, it's, and it's, he, she said it had good energy. Cool. It's strange though, according to my charts, we should have passed Dinosaur Rock before Duck Island. But that's okay, sometimes the charts need updating. Do the fucking rocks move? Or are we going in the opposite direction that you think we're going in? What have you, what have you done, Ezra? Hey, Will is down on the map room right now. Could you run down and help him adjust the charts to move Duck Island so it comes a little earlier on the route than Dinosaur Rock? The map room is down below, on the lower level. Right next to the sleeping quarters. I'll get on the intercom and let him know you're coming. I... question how you're just having a- you're just relying on a child to update your charts. I don't think he has anything more to say beyond what you just gave on the intercom, or what could we could just say on the intercom in a moment. Sometimes the charts need updating. Islands shouldn't be moving, bro. Big problem. Conway? Conway, you're such a background element these days. Hey. What's up? You look like you're about to fall asleep. Nah. I don't think I could ever fall asleep on a river. You're right, though. It's been a long day. I should maybe find some coffee to go with all this beer. Or just move on up to the real stuff. Doesn't weigh you down as much, you know? Nah, of course you don't. Hey, what am I talking about? Who knows? Okay. Bye. Conway, you make me sad. Uh. As somebody who knows alcoholics, it's... It's not wrong. It's a real bummer. Wow. This is harder than it looks. Oh, the theremin. Yeah, it takes a certain kind of ear. Oh, like perfect pitch? Do you have that? Not really that. It's more like muscle memory. When I'm playing the theremin, I kind of hear with my hands. I must sound ridiculous. No, no. I think I get it. <laughs> When it goes high enough, it sounds like somebody fucking around with a... With a, uh... Automaton. Salutation, small man. Kate says you have to adjust for our charts. Good timing. I'll check my copies. I'm just checking my copies. That's how we keep our charts up to get up to date. As we pass through a section of the river or the lake, I draw a new copy of the map and make adjustments for anything that doesn't match. Will points to a small drawing on the map. So, this is where we ha have dinosaur marked now. This little dinosaur drawing, I drew that. Cool claws. Thank you. Will points to another small drawing on the map. And this is where we thought Duck Island was, but now I guess we've got to move it back a bit. But how far, I wonder? 
Any ideas? Anything else you remember about when you saw Duck Island? The water got really dark for a little bit. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, that put Duck Island somewhere in here. That's the only part of the chart where di uh, before Dinosaur Rock where the lake deepens noticeably. Good work! That should do it for the new copy. Oh, I made some other corrections. T tucked in the banks a little, made this section deeper, and left off a shipwreck that might have washed away or been scavenged into splinters. Of course, it means a lot of clutter, all these old copies. Say, Will gestures to a pile of old maps. I was just about to throw the stack out. Maybe you'd like to hang on to one. They're out of date, but they can be fun to look at. They're most... These are mostly river charts, I think. Take a look around and see if one of them catches your eye. Ezra digs through the pile of maps. Ezra examines a rough, torn map. Here, turn it around, like... There you go. There's no, there's no real idea of north down here, magnetic or otherwise. So we just hold the maps with the current pointing down. The edges of the map are torn in gentle strips, probably by an idle hand and an absent mind. Oh yeah, I remember that day. Slow currents, boring. Not that I mind, it's healthy to get a little bored sometimes. A long tear runs in a clockwise... A tear runs in a clockwise curve along the paper through the middle of the river. The two sides are held together by paper clips woven into paper-like stitches. Ezra examines the faded old map. The river curves clockwise around a small, a few small islands, a note is scribbled along the margin. Islands just below the surface, only visible under bright light. They come and go, the islands that is. I still mark them if I see them. Ezra examines a crisp, clean map. That one I found wrapped in plastic, quite well preserved. I wrapped it up like that so the chalk wouldn't smear, but must have lost my pencil that day, I don't remember. The river curves clockwise, there are no islands marked, but a few other landmarks are indicated with chalk circles. The crisp clean one has the least useful inking, because it's chalk. That one was Duck Island, I'm pretty sure. Let's take the torn one. Nice. Well, thanks for your help with the chart adjustments. Our next stop is a bar called the Rum Colony. I guess you're not much of a bar fly, but you might want to run around on the beach. The decor is, well... I'd be curious to hear what you think of it. I can't remember if this is the same as before. That gas station isn't anchored to anything. It follows the current. We might run into it anywhere along the river. Kate just starts looking for it when she's low on fuel and the echo provides. It's not usually the lake, though. That was strange. Kate has a theory. She thought the rude weather upstairs was flooding the river, and everyone headed down the lake to ride it out for calmer waters. Anyway, my mechanical musician friends went ashore for a bit, too looking for some snack foods. Kate doesn't stock anything above aboard the mucky mammoth that doesn't grow wild, and it's not to everybody's tastes. Or maybe just stretch their limbs and charge their batteries. Mechanical musicians charge their batteries. It's one of the very it's one of the relatively rare references that are really explicitly mentioning that they're mechanical because it's it's weirdly untalked about. <laughs> they came back looking kind of confused though. I don't mean confused like, not like when somebody asks you a question and you don't know the answer, but you feel like you should, and you get that kind of alarmed blankness in your mind's eye. 
Not like that. They look confused like when you see two kinds of motor oil, and they cost the same, and you've never heard of either of them, and you read all the text on both packages, but all the new information just makes the choice seem even more impossible. You might be inclined to flip a coin, but how could you with something that important? Naturally, I assumed they met the gas station attendant, a man as anonymous and itinerant as the place itself. I assume he talked their ear off. Everyone on, on this river does. But I know that fellow well enough to know he wouldn't want us reminiscing on him now. He wouldn't want us remembering him. <laughs> so, they came back aboard, Mammoth refueled, and we ambled on towards the rum colony. I know that guy well enough to know that we wouldn't want him to... <laughs> Shannon followed the other travelers ashore to a drowsy beachside bar called the Rum Colony. Last time, we hung out and looked at VHS tapes. Although no time did I feel more conned than the time I looked I did the dog scene and it was just like a picture basically. Ooh. We don't see a ton of color in this game. Sometimes you almost forget that the game is in color. Of how muted it gets. Yep, sounds like him. Our friend Cyrano's booked here tonight. He's pretty good. Cyrano. Okay, so people definitely survived the station. Whatever happened there. I think I vaguely feel like I remember the reference to one person dying. I don't know if that was this game or not, or if I'm mixing wires from other things. But yeah, Cyrano is the guy that did the weather report in the Chapter 4 interlude. He is a wizard. A wizard of the lap steel guitar. Haha. <laughs> Are you two coming ashore? Oh, sure. We'll be up in a minute. You couldn't hold me back. Oh, I don't know. K says just to want. Uh, K says to just wander back whenever. This is a take it easy kind of stop. She doesn't even blow the foghorn to round up the crew here. No point. Something about this spot is uh, like wax in the ear when it comes to timetables and responsibilities. I was supposed to meet someone here earlier tonight about some bike parts. Hope she's still around. Oh, I'm sure she is, ma'am. Half sleeping into a fragrant mug. With all of their wayward, with all with all other wayward sailors, is this like the island of sirens, basically? I've got a little flashlight. I don't think you'd like the flashlight. Oh, but you can't talk to him without the flashlight. It's me. I'm the dick. This music is so sweet. Don't you think so? It's like a flower, I think. A delicious, heavy flower. Like this flower in my drink. It makes my eyelids feel like petals. Wet with early morning dew. Have you ever slept on the beach? Doesn't the sand get all everywhere? Oh, probably. I'll deal with that tomorrow. I certainly won't deal with it tonight. Tonight, I'm just sipping this. I forget what it's called. They put a pale pink flower in it. Isn't that tranquil? Oh gosh, I'm so stressed out. What are you so stressed about? Work, love, the weight of each approaching day. Everyone deserves to rest, don't you think? Even you and I? Sure we do. Sure we do. Someday. The lake and the riverbed will be dry. The shops along it will be bankrupt. The homes empty. The boats abandoned. See, even the river will re even the river will rest. Why should we be any different? You know, my colleagues and I are meant to be celebrating something of a milestone here this evening. A milestone? It's true. We. Ah, uh, well. It's kind of hard to explain. Bureau of Reclaimed Space has ever heard of it? Of course, I met, I met you there earlier tonight. Oh, we, uh, of course. 
Good to see you again. Oh wait, now I remember you came by to see Lula. I mean, Senior Clerk Chamberlain. Oh, our dear Lula. I mean, Miss Chamberlain. Tragically, she couldn't join us tonight. Jumped ship at the last minute. Said she had some packing to do. Wonder where she's going. <sighs> All this conversation is making me lightheaded. I think I'll shut my eyes a bit. Maybe just halfway. I'll listen to the water and the sweet music and the whispers of my colleagues. Shop talk. Can you believe it? Still working. Always working. It's better, I think, to sleep. Yeah. Better to sleep. I figured he's from the Bureau. It's hard to keep track of every, every single character because there's so many. But I was like, he's probably from the bureau because he's dressed like a he's wearing, he's he's dressed like a office worker. Shannon finds a bottle. Its label is worn away, but the words "Hot Hell Rum" are legibly embossed on this glass. The bottle's empty, except for a sleeping crab. Crabs sleep. I guess that makes sense. Do you not pick up the bottle though? I feel like that would have really woken it up. Shannon finds a small box about the right size for an injured baby bird or a couple of mice. This box is only full of sand. She rolls a few grains in her fingertips. It feels different from the sand under her toes. Finer and slicker. She has the feeling this is sand from a different beach. What? Why? <laughs> Why? The water's fine. Invigorating. It makes me want to run. I could gallop up and down this beach like a horse. What's he yelling about? He wants us to run on the beach, like a horse, she, he says. Oh dear. What's in these drinks, huh? You folks work at the Bureau. We're celebrating. We just hit a big milestone, you know. The clerks both pause, waiting for the other to speak. Well, tell her about it. But I don't know anything more than you two. It wasn't part of my caseload. They're all here to celebrate a uh, milestone that they don't even understand. Well, it wasn't part of mine. I wonder just what we're celebrating. It doesn't matter. Invigorating! Catch anything, Lewis? So. Uh, d did you find what you were looking for? With Lula, I mean. It's a work in progress. I know what you mean. I've been working on... I think I will go for a run along the beach. As soon as I'm finished with this drink. Try not to yell so loud, Lewis. I'm afraid you'll shake the ceiling loose. He's just standing in the water yelling. Alcohol does things to people. They kind of just start performing random actions. Any random urge that comes to mind with not a lot of context a lot of the time. A styrofoam cup is half buried in the sand, meticulously intact. It still has some cream in it. Maybe it came from the bar, or maybe someone dropped it here on their way to the bar. Maybe they weren't even headed to the bar originally but drank their coffee too fast and needed a stiff counterbalance. Shannon thinks about the war of liquids into the stomach. Coffee to start a day. Liquor to end it. Apple cider vinegar to patch up the battlefield. Her mouth feels dry. She thinks about all the nervous casualties of the liquid war. Clumsy alchemists transmuting day into night. I, wanna, I want some apple cider vinegar. She thinks about a chalky, gray-pink liquid her mother kept for upset stomachs that was stored in a coffee cup, too. 
Pepto Bismo in a coffee cup? Why? Wait, stored in it? What do you mean stored? Doesn't it come in a bottle? Was it something else entirely? It seems like you don't necessarily miss out on any marks by having your flashlight on. I didn't really see anything pop up from it being off. You just feel like the asshole on the beach that's shining a light around. A damp matchbook rests on the top of the sand. Shannon flips it open without looking. Runs her thumb along the cupboard, the cardboard. Finds one match still intact. She stares ahead, transfixed by the texture on her fingertip, and she wonders if it will flake apart and leave her hands smelling and feeling like fire for the rest of the night, or if the cold lake water has already washed away that part of the match, the part that smells and feels like fire.